praise the Lord God Almighty. To God be the glory, the honor, and the praise forever and evermore. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone who ever sees this video today. I come on this morning just to encourage you to just know that God loves you, He cares about you. Doesn't matter what you're going through on this day, that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. I was thinking about the scripture this morning in Mark chapter 10, again in verse 40. Forty six, verse forty six. Let's open the word of prayer. So, Father, I thank you this morning for your grace and mercy showed upon us. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, O oh God, to will and according to your good pleasure. Thanks, Father God, this morning to speak that by divine revelation to inspire the edifying build us on our faith to trust you, Lord God. We find ourselves, Father, coming up short that you would be exalted in the midst, O oh God. Let your will be done. Saturate your anointing powers by your grace, O God. Live in the freedom that's found in knowing you. Break the chains and the shackles off our hearts this morning, Lord God. Give us your heart. Give us your spirit. Give us, Father God, the mind of Christ to walk in obedience to your word, Father God, to live by faith and not by sight into the promises that you have bestowed upon us. And I thank you in Jesus' name for cleansing to take place in us, O God. Forgive us for our sins, O God. Sins of commission, sins of not knowing what we've done, Father God, sins of thoughts, sins of the mouth, O oh God. Purify, saturate your anointing, and we thank you that we have been set free through Christ Jesus our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning to those who come on to hear this word this morning. I pray that you are standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ, that you're walking in the promises that God has bestowed upon you by his Spirit. Amen. I want to do something, um, just a moment, going to the Word, because I believe that this Word is going to help someone today who might be feeling that your visions have become blinded and you feel like your cry is being unheard and that you've been seeking God and it seems like God is not answering you. I have a devotion this morning that says, Do not hesitate to receive joy from me, for I bestowed it upon you abundantly. The more you rest in my presence, the more freely my blessings flow into you. In the light of my love, you are gradually transformed from glory to glory. It is through spending time with me that you realize how wide and long and how high and deep is my love for you. Sometimes the relationship I offer you seems too good to be true. I pour my very life into you and all, I have, all you have to do is receive me. I pour my very life into you, and all you have to do is receive me. In a world characterized by working and taking, the admonition to rest and to receive seems too easy. There is a close connection between receiving and believing. As you trust me more and more, you are able to receive me and my blessings abundantly. Be, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. I pray that it comforts your heart, give you encouragement this morning with that word. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46, it says, They came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. When he heard it, it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer. Comfort, rise, he calleth thee. 
and he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What would thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. There's another passage concerning a blind person. is in John chapter 9, beginning in verse 1. It says, And Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So these two passages of scriptures identify the two different types of blind people. One that's born from birth and the other man that doesn't indicate how he was made blind, but something happened in his life that caused him to experience blindness. And many times the enemy comes, as the word says, if the gospel be hid, it's hidden to them who are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. Many times we feel blind because we don't understand and comprehend what God is doing in our lives. The man who's born blind is something he cannot fix, he can't change, he can't alter. It has to, he has to accept the fact that I'm blind and I cannot see. And the disciples question Jesus, Lord, did this man do anything that was caused him to be born blind? Or cause this blindness to be effective in his life? And Jesus made it clear that no, it was for the works of God to be made manifest in him. So whatever God is doing in your life, he has a reason. He, he has a purpose. And we have to accept the fact that sometimes we're blinded in the things we try to do in our own endeavors. And we make a mess of things. And sometimes God will allow the blindness to take place in you to prevent you from causing any harm to yourself or anyone else. A blind person cannot harm anyone because they can't see where they're going. They can't see from around them. But they, the other senses become so sharp and so keen where they can hear. They can even even uh, uh, perceive many different things spiritually from the blindness that they have upon their lives. Because like the taste becomes stronger. The, the smell becomes stronger. The hearing becomes stronger because their senses are magnified because one area of the body is suffering where one part cannot function the way it was designed to be. So in our scripture today in Jericho, when Jesus was passing through Jericho, there was a blind man named Bartimaeus who sat by the roadside doing what? Begging. Desiring some assistance, desiring some substance, desiring somebody to help him. And many people passed this blind man by. Perhaps some even gave him alms, a, a little finances to help along this journey. But nevertheless, this man was in a position, in a place at the right time with God orchestrated for him to be where he could experience life. We have to get to the place where we stop resisting God, opposing God, but let God's word begin to manifest in our life. We're living in a place full of sin and iniquity because the foolish hearts were darkened with sin of mankind and they don't realize that the things they're doing is provoking the judgment of God upon themselves and God is not to be marked. Whatever man soweth, that should he also reap. So we have to pay attention of the way we're living and things that we do even the words we speak over ourselves and, and other people. So we, we're, we're going to be judged by the words that we speak. The word tells us that every man will give an account of his every word that he's spoken. Blind Bartimaeus is, is, is so significant because he sat in a certain place looking for something to fulfill his heart's desire. But then it says, when he heard, 
that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He cried out. You know, it's, it puzzles me that this man didn't know Jesus personally, couldn't see Jesus coming, but he listened to the crowd that followed Jesus. And somehow the crowd were magnifying and praising Jesus enough to where this blind man heard that Jesus was passing by his location where he was positioned. He was in a position for a miracle. And as he sat in this place, in the street side begging, when Jesus came along, he said, Thou, son of David, have mercy on me. And it's something how the people around you would try to hinder you from receiving your miracle. As just like here in our story, it said that many charged him that he should hold his peace. No, be quiet. Don't say nothing. But because of his heart's desire, after hearing that Jesus Christ had done miracles, perhaps he heard about the miracles that had been taking place, hear about how Jesus raised the dead, how Jesus fed the multitude, how Jesus did different things, captivated his attention when he heard about this same Jesus passing by to cry out. And to say he cried out the more deal. I mean, he magnified his cry. He intensified his cry to get Jesus' attention. Then it goes and says, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have compassion on me. Please stop by where I'm at. Help me. I need you right now. I'm, and my desperation of cry is, is a need for you to help me. How many times have we cried out to our friends, our associates, our co-workers on our jobs, when we're in a dire need for different things to take place in our lives, you might have needed money to, to pay a bill, you might have needed to pay your car note, you might need to pay your electric bill, you might have been in a place where you needed food in your house and your, your resources were limited. So you cried out for somebody to help you. And everybody turned their back on you. Nobody wants to help you. Nobody wants to even come to your aid. Or when you're sick and afflicted, nobody wants to come help you get well. You have to realize that sometimes God will enable you to be in a place you are where nobody else can help you. Because God has a reason to put you in a place of solitary, even when it comes to afflictions. Sometimes God will sit you down in an affliction to heal you, but also fill you with wisdom, knowledge, understanding from the Holy Ghost. And he allowed you to be in that position to transition your mindset to receive the kingdom mind inside of you to operate in kingdom business. Glory to God in the highest. Listen to this. Verse 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Isn't that something? He moved Jesus' heart with the intensified crying out for help. And it says, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they, who are they? The people who surrounded him. The people who were saying ones who were there telling him to be quiet, hold your peace, don't say anything, are the same ones he cried out to and said, help him. Bring him to me. Be of good cheer or be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garments, rose and came to Jesus. Isn't that something how he, he cast away his garment? In other words, the things that are attached to me that of, are of no value, I am willing to let it go to follow you. And that's exactly what blind Bartimaeus did. He cast away his garment. He rose and when he got up from his downfall, his pit, 
of despair. He rose up and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? He asked the question, What do you want? You stopped me. You got my attention. What do you need me to do for you? How many times you came to your pastor and your pastor ignored you and you're trying to ask the pastor a question about something to do with certain things going on in your relationship, going on in your, your, your health, going on in your mind, how you're being troubled, you're, you're uneasy and the children are, are, are chaotic and life is falling apart and you're trying to get the pastor's attention but he just turns a deaf ear to you. So you begin to call on even more. Pastor, I need you. I need your help. And the pastor stops in his tracks and says, what do you want me to do for you? What, what, what can I do to help you? This man, he got Jesus' attention. Jesus calls him to come to him. And then Jesus asks a question. What should I do to thee? And the blind man said to the Lord, that I might receive my sight. <laughs> that is so awesome. It's amazing. When you think about it, I'm blinded from ambitions. I'm blinded from dreams. I'm blinded from the promises God has spoken in his word. I'm blinded from seeing myself coming out of this illness. I'm blinded from seeing myself overcoming the troubles of life. I'm blinded from getting over this grief and sorrow in my heart. My, my heart is overwhelmed. I'm supposed to go to the rock, cars, and I, but, but I find myself being blinded from even seeing God in anything. And this blind man cried out for help. And Jesus asked a question, What would thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said to him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus answered unto him, or said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. You hear that? He asked the question. He got a response. What's your response? If the Lord asks you, What is it you're crying out for me to do for you? What will be your response? And it says, and immediately Jesus told him, he said, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. <laughs> Check this out, y'all. He didn't just get his sight back. He got a desire to follow the Lord from that day forward. It says, and he followed Jesus in the way. In other words, he made a decision now that I'm made whole from my blindness, I can see where I need to go in life. I can see what God is doing for me. Now I can follow Jesus. And then he followed him in the way. That means he got up from his place of sorrow and self-pity and, and anguish and, and anxiety and stress and worry and, and decided, I got a new life now. I can see. I once was blind. You read the whole story, you find out he was blinded, but now he can see. Even in John 9, the blind man who was blind didn't see who it was that healed him. But Jesus sat on the ground and made a, a, a spittle of clay, put it on his blinded eyes, and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went to the pool of Siloam and was washed and came seeing. Isn't that something? Both encounters. One, Jesus didn't touch physically, but he touched spiritually with his words. The other encounter, he actually performed something, faith about works is dead. So he did something of faith well, he did some work by making the spittle of clay 
And he made a salve and put it on the blind man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. In other words, interpretation, he sent him. And it says, he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. That is so wonderful. That is so wonderful. He went and came seeing. Both men who were blinded got what they were looking for from the Lord. What are you looking for from the Lord today? It's something you need to ask yourself. Take a moment. Examine your heart to find out what is it inside of you that you're crying out for God to do in your life. It might be need needing deliverance from a stronghold, from a bondage, from chains and shackles, from homosexuality, from, from lesbianism, from drunkenness, from, from fornication, adultery, from lying and stealing, from cheating, manipulating, de deceiving folk, anger, malice, jealousy, rage, hypocrisy, getting over the mindset of Jezebel that's been controlling you to keep you in a place where you hold resentment towards people who hurt you. Whatever it is today, you got to let the Lord deliver you. Let him bring you out by his spirit for you know with confidence that he's right there in the midst to heal and deliver your broken heart and bring you through victoriously. It's up to you to make a decisive decision. I'm going to let go of all the mess in my life, even the people that mean me no good. I'm going to let go of them. I'm going to walk in God's truth and his word of righteousness and allow the spirit of God to lead God and direct me in the pathway he chooses and walk and abide in love. Because the love of God covers a multitude of faults only if you're willing to let God deal with the offense in your heart. You might have offended someone or they may have offended you. You have to let go of the offense in order to receive what you're expecting God to do in your life. You might be a leader in a church. You might be a church member. You might be a deacon, a trustee, an usher, a nurse. doesn't matter who you are in the body of Christ. A servant. We're all a servant of the Most High God. And the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. He demonstrated the life we need to live before mankind as servants of the Most High God. So whatever it is in your heart that's not right today, repent. If you confess your sins for the Lord, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let the Lord cleanse you. Let the Lord heal you. Let the Lord deliver you. And I guarantee your life will be more fruitful. It will be abundant. The blessings will flow through you as a reservoir unto other people because of your heart of obedience. So I pray you be encouraged with these words today to walk by faith and not by sight. So Lord God, I thank you today for this word, oh God. I pray that I'm not falling from deaf ears, but you would empower, you would charge, you would edify you build us up in our faith to trust you all the more that you will be glorified and exalted and i thank you lord god in jesus name amen you all have a blessed exciting and a wonderful and glorious day in the presence of the lord may god keep you his face shine upon you may the lord continue to lead god and direct you in the way of truth and the way of righteousness in jesus name shalom peace be to you have a great day